Hi everyone, I'm Justin McLeod, Community Relations Coordinator for Roanoke City Public Schools. We're dedicating this month's show to our annual Welcome Back to Teachers. You'll hear from district leaders, our talented students, and our main speaker, one of the original Freedom Riders. We had an absolutely great year last year. There were more achievements, I think, than this district has ever seen in the history that I recall, and that would be just about 20 years. But there are some people here that I think are very special guests this morning, and I'm going to ask all of our new employees to please stand. Welcome aboard, and I hope that you will stay on this ship for a very long time. And as your superintendent, I will do everything within my power to keep you on the ship, to keep the ship upright, and to make certain that you are treated very well. Uh, please feel free to talk to anyone if you have any issues, but I can't tell you how grateful I am to have you here. There are districts, and uh, this pains me. This is, we are fully staffed. And that's through the efforts of a great many people. But I will tell you this, that I take no pleasure in thinking about children in classrooms without teachers anywhere. Because in this country, our children deserve the very best that we can give. And um, I can't tell you how sad it makes me that they don't always get that in other places. I do want to talk to you about uh, something that is going to happen that could change this district forever if we do it right. We are going to become a trauma-informed school district. And um, I know some of the stories sitting in front of me about people who have experienced great trauma and have survived for a whole variety of reasons. And the, there's just enough counselor in me to think this is one of the most important things that we will ever do. This initiative will be headed by Tasha Steele, who is our Director of Guidance. And uh, Lori Seidel will certainly work with her on this. But beginning with your first faculty meeting, we will explain, your principal will explain to you exactly what that means. And it is by no accident that we chose today's guest speaker. If you need to get your heart in touch with what it means to experience childhood trauma, then you have no better person than the guest speaker. So let your heart open to the words that he has to say. We also have um, uh, gr a great music program. Justin certainly talked about that. And if you're dreaming big, it was always my dream to have the best music program anywhere. And we are very close to that. And there's some people that I really do want to mention to you. Alex Schmidt is the band director at Patrick Henry, and he's been with us. Okay, all of you colonels, we worked really hard to get you a band director this year. Michael Sanchez is the new band director at William Fleming. And all I can say is I think this, is, this choir is positively lovely. And you really don't get there without great adults working with students. I was watching Lenora Turner, who was on keyboards, and uh, Nicole Schmidt, who was conducting. And the love out of their eyes for those students was simply amazing. So thank both of you very much. I do want you to know, um, and I, I'm going to be better than I've been recently, this is a good school district. It may be better than we even know. Don't let anyone on the street 
make you feel otherwise. The teachers who are here are terrific, and heaven only knows they don't get any better than you and the people that lead you at the site level. So we are solidly behind you. I have nothing to say to you except thank you, thank you, thank you. For our generation is that we learn to stand strong together as one. My dream for our generation is that we stand up, lift your voice, don't be silent.
American journalist Sidney Harris once said, the whole purpose of education is to turn mirrors into windows. I believe Roanoke's schools are doing just that. They're holding up the mirror to show our students who they are and you're helping them identify their dreams and opening windows of opportunity to live those dreams in the world. Royal Oak is fortunate to have an outstanding education system under the leadership of Dr. Rita Bishop. And it's evident to me that our public schools are teaching students that need to know that it's important for them to succeed and it prepares them to follow their dreams. And I want to thank you all individually, and I'm sure I speak for my colleagues here on city council, that you're so important to us. And what we achieve in many ways as a city is because of you and your commitment and your dedication. I know that you are now under a lot of stress. It's around the country. Just look around the country. I think we as a council, I know we as a council and others are working with your school board has taken the necessary action to make sure that you are safe every day in your schools. But I can appreciate the commitment and dedication you have uh, because I have a daughter and a son-in-law who, who beginning their 19th year as educators. So I understand what they're doing and I'm proud of both of them for their commitment because at lunch, when they're over for dinner, when we're watching the ball games together or sleeping in their den by the movie, they're talking about students. They're talking about schools, what they can do to make it better. And so uh, I'm just so proud of all the commitments that you all have made and, and, and are making to make our schools better. And there's a tagline that I like to quote for Roanoke City Public Schools. Strong students, strong schools, Strong city, strong city. Roanoke is in a booming place. We're gonna be sharing with you and you'll see some exciting things that are happening in our city. We're rated in a number of national magazines. As you know, we've got the All-American Award, City Award last year. Uh, we're on the verge of a lot of things. Star City Reads is moving in a, in a tremendous way. Yesterday, I had an opportunity to take a package of books to barbershops in our city, to give the students, to have them to read when they come in. So we're doing some great things in this city, and I'm excited to work with the city council I have, the committed city council that's, I mean, we, 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 you're gonna see those things happen, but all of it helps us, it helps us to move forward when we have a school system with a 90% graduation rate. That's, that's awesome. So as mayor, I'm proud of you. As a former school board member, I'm proud of the school board. I'm proud of our, our legislative delegation that does what they can to make it happen in Roanoke. We work as a team, and I'm looking forward to a great year, to a great year. And, uh, and let me just say, and I'll say this from a biblical standpoint, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. And as long as you know that, we can make it. God bless you. Have a great year. You know, it's a great pleasure, and it really is, uh, I think, both an honor and a responsibility of the foundation to support the people that we think are so important in our children's lives. And that's all of you all sitting out there as our teachers. Y'all have such tremendous influence on young lives, and y'all shape them for the future of this country. 
and for their futures. And for that, I think the foundation extends a tremendous thank you to all of you all. And up here stands a shining example of exactly who we're honoring. So congratulations. Uh, Ms. Nichols teaches the sixth grade science at Lucy Addison Middle School, home of the Bulldogs. <laughs> She earned her Bachelor of Science in Wildlife Science and Master of Arts in Curriculum and Instruction from Virginia Tech, and recently earned an Educational Leadership Certificate from James Madison University. Impressive. Mrs. Nichols has spent her career working with students in poverty and those who have experienced significant trauma in their lives. She is able to elevate teaching and learning in the classroom gets students engaged in 21st century skills, extends learning to outside the classroom and connects students with their community and fosters learning with relevant experiences. According to Ms. Nichols, her greatest contributions and accomplishments in education revolve around a very simple strategy, just show up for kids every day. That's fabulous. She says, what has sustained me throughout my career is my genuine love for kids, uh, bringing energy and passion into the classroom, and my commitment to making a lasting, positive impact beyond the classroom. The Roanoke City Public Schools Education Foundation is proud to present this check to Ms. Jamie Nichols, the 2018 Teacher of the Year. I have this uncanny ability to read minds, and right now a lot of you are thinking, please be brief. <laughs> I had taught for 10 years by the time I arrived to Roanoke City Public Schools after the school year had begun. I thought I was prepared and had seen it all. Well, I wasn't, and I hadn't. I was told, just don't let them see you cry. And you know, it's the good advice that you just didn't take. I did cry, in class, a few times because I didn't yet have the skill set needed for teaching in a high trauma, high poverty urban school. Initially, I needed more support than ever before. And you know what happened? My administrative team showed up in critical ways and with unwavering faith in my ability to succeed. My district supervisor showed up. Colleagues showed up. They continue to show up as I grow and stumble and grow some more. And I am so grateful to those who have invested in me. When you show up, it can really change people. Sometimes it even saves them. And helping others ultimately helps our kids. You know, what we do for kids can be a great equalizer because when we take care of kids emotionally and teach them how to handle adversity, to regroup and self-regulate and manage their emotions, we give them options so that they aren't limited in life because otherwise their trauma will be their barrier. Now, at the same time, we have to be focusing on instruction. And by building up these two things, the social and the academic, we give our students their best chance in life. Whatever happens in their homes, we can help them create something different while at school. We can't eliminate choices for them. And all of this is very hard work. So reach out when you need it. Continue to reflect and push yourself to do better. Show up for others. Know that kids will think and act like kids, because they are, and try not to cry in front of them. But if you do, it's okay. Just pull yourself back together and continue to work hard. Thank you. Thank you very much. You want to take this with you yeah. as a I work in my day job at TAP, an agency that provides support for thousands each year who have faced traumatic situations, be it poverty, homelessness, domestic violence, child abuse, a poor choice that led someone to be locked up behind bars, gunshots in the neighborhood, the terrible news of an incurable disease, 
the loss of a family member that died too soon, a divorce that devastated a life. I've faced trauma and you've faced it too. If you think about it, as Dr. Bishop asked the new teachers at orientation, just think about it. You've experienced trauma. It has left an imprint that can be a wound very hard to heal without support or without hope or without just sure grit. Somehow you overcame or you are overcoming. For sure, you are overcoming. And we will have children who need you to provide the support and the hope instilled in them so that they can gain the grit they need to overcome and become successful. Throughout the year, you will learn how to help those who have experienced tra trauma. And today, you will hear from someone who overcame trauma himself. Please listen to his story. Gain insight that will help you. You will take away tools that you can use as you help dreams come true. It is my pleasure to introduce our speaker this morning. Our speaker is an original freedom writer whose story is told in part in the 2007 hit movie, Freedom Writers. By age 16, his story was almost over. His father was incarcerated. He dropped out of school had lived in 26 places, and his best friend had been brutally murdered. But he turned the page and began writing new, more fulfilling chapters in his life. Chapters filled with healing, hope, perseverance, and possibility. He is a PhD student, author, aviator, and one of the nation's most sought after speakers. Manny Scott has empowered nearly two million people to improve the quality of not only their lives, but also the lives of those around them. Through his power of one keynote, How to Reach Youth Today seminar, and his Turn the Page assembly. He has helped thousands of schools raise student achievement and leader efficacy in 49 states and five continents. And he has helped prevent thousands of dropouts and suicides. Manny Scott is the author of several books, including a memoir that is only available to individuals who hear him speak in person. After his presentation, he will be available to sign books and take selfies or ussies for anyone interested. Manny Scott is happily married, the father of three children, and he and his family are on the road 300 days a year, serving leaders and youth all over the globe. He is with us today from Atlanta, Georgia. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Mr. Manny Scott. Can your kids see themselves in your curriculum? Because if your kids cannot see themselves or people who are not like them, if they don't see the rich, beautiful mosaic that is our country and our world, what you are saying to them is that they and people like them don't matter. Humble yourself and become a student of your students. Study them. 
Like an anthropologist studies culture, study language, heroes, symbols, rituals, family structure, study life through their eyes before you seek to evaluate or analyze, seek to understand and recognize, and recognize. Even on your worst day, you can still be someone's best hope. Even on your worst day, you might be someone's second or last chance, and so I beg you to learn, to serve, to teach, to love, to hire, to fire, like your life depends on it because your kids' lives really do. Hey, Melissa. Hi. I like your outfit. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. You look ridiculous. Dude, where'd you get that shirt at Goodwill? I did, actually. Yeah, I like it. Don't you have something better to do? Before we go, we want to thank the community for your help with our recent uh, Load the Bus campaign. Once again, Roanoke City and Roanoke County Public Schools joined forces with Walmart to collect school supplies for our students. We held a kickoff event at the Bonsack Walmart, which featured the drum line from Patrick Henry High School and the cheerleaders from William Fleming High School. We greatly appreciate all of you who donated money and school supplies to ensure our students started the school year on the right foot. I like to thank Walmart in general. Last year, we give a lot to our community. This event, Load the Bus, raised over $40,000 to help support. So we're, we're here with a beautiful day behind us. We're going to get ready to kick it off and load these buses and do it again. Thank you. I think kids deserve support. We've all needed support in our lives, and this supports the aims of children. I have with me a board member, Eli Jamison, and uh, I appreciate her efforts. And I'd just like to have her say a few words and then I will go be quiet. I will just echo Dr. Bishop's thanks to all of you for doing all of this. And I'll put in a plug, I'm a proud mother of a Patrick Henry uh, alumni marching band member. So good luck this year in California. But thank you all for your support because the children across this area are the best in the world and everything we do with our partnerships are so important. And so we really thank you and thank you to Walmart for everything you're doing to support all the children um, this coming year. Thanks again, and that's this month's show. We'll see you again soon.